I am actually shaking. I'm so cold. Ah, oh, God, I hate winter. It's cold. Ugh. What's up, YouTube? Graver here, and today we're doing a bit of a nerf mod slash prop build because The Mandalorian is going to be coming out pretty soon, at least when I'm recording this. By the time this actually does come out on YouTube, it will definitely be out. Um, but I, I don't want to say in honor of it, but I guess because of Star Wars hype, I have a couple of these uh, Kira blasters from Han from uh, Solo, a uh, Star Wars story. And honestly, I've always really kind of liked the profile of this. It's a nice little double shot pistol, very reminiscent of what I would think a space um, flintlock would almost look like. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to modify this up to look more like it would be long in Star Wars and not just a red toy pistol. So, I'm not going to do anything regarding the electronics on this. Um, it has a couple of things here. So like if you pull the trigger, it fires and it has a little light here. Also, if you prime it, because it's supposed to use like glow lights or not glow lights, uh, glow darts, the front of it has two UV lights in here. And I just like that kind of like extra aesthetic. And plus, I'm going to keep this functional. So there is that. But it's mostly going to be a little bit of dremeling, um, a whole butt ton of sanding, because while this side only says Star Wars on it, this side has like every warning under the freaking sun possible. So I'm going to sand off all of that text, sand off the Star Wars logo, uh, paint this up really nice, or at least once it's a warm enough day for it. Um, and that's really going to be it so why don't we go over to the bench hop to it start taking this thing apart and start sanding okay so here we are with the blaster i'm just going to first move the batteries because obviously we don't really need that if we're modifying and it actually only takes one double a battery which is actually rather nice so put that to the side and basically, outside of just these, uh, all you need is sandpaper. Now I have a bunch of different ones here. I have this flexible 220 stuff, which I have to say is actually really, really nice. Um, a sanding block, just again in case. 400 grit sandpaper, because once I get through the 220, while most people will leave it at that, I like going over with a 400 just because it kind of smooths out any kind of... Uh, little bit of roughness so to speak a sanding stick or as i like to call from my local dollar store a nail file and just in case there's some trouble bits i have my dremel on standby along with a couple of bits this is a 220 sanding bit along with a couple of uh sanding stones that i have as well which are really old well, i could use some new ones but um, you know what I'm thinking? Oh, I forgot. There's one more thing we do need. Obviously, I'm not using this one, but um, you will also need a cutoff wheel, and that I will explain when we get there. So I think for first, I'm just I'm not gonna actually take it apart just yet. I'm going to try sanding off what I can, and then we'll take it apart, because at that point, then we'll be good for sanding. But since I don't really need to take it apart to sand it, we're just going to go ahead and start sanding. Yeah. So. Just going to start with the 220. And I'm not going to start on the Star Wars thing because that is raised, so I'll definitely use the Dremel for that. But for the smaller text blocks here, I'm just going to start with hand, hand sanding 220. 
I may or may not film all of this, but if I do, it's going to be quite a little montage. Okay, so I've gotten the Star Wars logo off of this side. Uh, this is actually starting to come along really, really nicely. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this apart and finish the sanding like that because A, there's certain things I'm not going to be able to get to like very deeply into this where the, um, where the uh, hammer for the original, I guess, um, real steel build that the pistol used was. Um, but also I want to make sure I get in all of the nooks and crannies plus this orange. I definitely want to make sure I uh, sand very well because this stuff is a notorious pain in the butt to not take paint, even vinyl dyes. Now I am going to be vinyl dyeing this. So yes, I technically don't have to do all the sanding, but I'm doing it as precautionary prep work. So I'm going to take this apart. And what I'm going to do is I will be back when this is ready or just before we're going to go to paint. Okay, so this is the thing completely blown apart. What we're going to do is this. Obviously, I have not finished actually sanding this at this point, but what I got my cutoff wheel for is this. What I'm going to do is on the plunger part, since this is just a solid piece and to kind of bring it back to a little bit more I guess you can say authentic looking I'm actually gonna take off the little finger pull now I know what you're saying what the hell but the finger pull really isn't necessary I've actually played around with it if you just grab it right here with the spring load that's in there you can obviously without changing it you can easily just prime it but just by holding this or grabbing it kind of like this almost like kind of like doing a slide prime so it's not really going to be a much of an issue. The other thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take off this iron sight. Now, again, I know what you're saying. What the hell? Here's the thing, though. From this angle, it looks fine. But from the back, it's all hollow, and I don't like that. So I'm going to make those two quick modifications. And the other, the other fun thing is this all comes apart very easily, so you're really going to be able to get into all the nooks and crannies and um, in making sure everything is all uh, matching matching and good and all that stuff now in regards to the handle though what I am going to do is I'm going to make a small change and that is the battery compartment I'm probably not actually going to paint uh, just because I want to make sure everything all of the everything bleh, I can't speak everything goes back in proper um, so like the screw doesn't have any issues doesn't have any issues clearing in there so what i may wind up doing is i may actually just for sake of painting screw this back in so that it will actually stay in place and keep what i want covered covered so we're gonna start by chopping this off and then we're going to just i'm gonna try and get this off with the cutting wheel if not you'll definitely be able to grind it off with either the stone bit or something else. So as you can see, since this has the solid back on it, we're able to cut this off with no problem. Obviously, I did leave a lot, well, a little more than I'd wanted, but I did leave a little bit so it wasn't cutting flush, but that's what we're going to wind up grinding off for with the other thing. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut, after I've cut off the back, I've just sanded it down. I used my uh, stone grinding bit to take down what was left, and then I just basically ran it across some 400 grit sandpaper to make it all nice and super smooth. So that's all done. What I want to do next is take this off. So I'm going to need the cutting wheel, and it's going to be the same thing. Cut it off with a little bit of extra room, since this is pretty flat right where the iron sight is uh, I'll take the grinding bit to get down everything that I can and then just run it along the 400 grit sandpaper now there may be a small delay from well not for you not for you watching but for me at least uh, because uh, New Jersey has hit a bit of a cold snap so I don't know when I'm actually gonna get a chance to actually paint this hopefully it will be soon um, or at least on a bit of a nicer day uh, right now, I think it's like, it is 38 degrees, 
so it's chilly so I don't think I'm gonna be painting it today hopefully I get a nice warmer day anything basically above 45 before December hits I will be happy with but if not I'll figure something out because I would like to get this video out before the Mandalorian actually you know is over so also if you have watched it throw me a comment down below let me know what you think of it personally I've seen the first episode and it's awesome so I'm gonna get to work on this and actually I'll yeah we'll, we'll go over I'll show you the whole the whole little process of doing this part because it's smaller ish There you go. Now it looks like the iron sight was never there. So I still have to do cleanup on these parts. Um, I've done a good majority of the sanding of what I want to get done on everything, but you know, everything still needs a quick wipe down with the rubbing alcohol and then it will basically, then it will basically be on to paint. So, and I'm not going to worry about painting the inside of it. Um, also, I'm not doing what I normally do where I cover up the barrel holes because if any does get in there fine whatever um, the light would be more towards the back of the back of it anyway uh, back of the plunger the barrel tubes can't speak but uh, once I get a good day to paint you will be seeing that next okay I vinyl dyed everything um, it's a little cold right now in the shop but it's warm enough in the or hopefully it will be warm enough to do the paints. So plan is going to be these pieces are going to be I'm painting brown since it has a wood look on it already. You're going to add the wood texture to it. These two pieces, um, well these three pieces I should say, they're going to go gunmetal. This is all going to go silver and hopefully I think the silver and the gunmetal is going to be a nice contrast to each other. Uh, hopefully a little bit stronger than what's on my um, the lightsaber that I prop that I did a while back but I think this along with the wood will make it kind of like a nice dark and then the silver will give it a nice pop and make it seem like not segmented but be like okay it's the internals of what the gunmetal is covering so I'm gonna go paint those up and be back in a minute with the results okay so here is the final product um I didn't film the actual like process before I re-put everything together because when we well I should say when I actually finished this off uh, me and Arlene were actually working on straightening up some stuff in the shop here so I didn't think to film it but I gotta say it came out really really nice the silver worked out really good uh, the one that I used the it was an ace chrome uh, it's not one I've actually used on uh, blasters before, so I was very pleasantly surprised that it worked as well as it did. The gunmetal here is the duplicolor uh, gunmetal that I use uh, that I get actually from the automotive store because I really do like that one. And the hand, the the brown on the handle. <coughs> excuse me. 
this was a rustoleum brown satin uh which again worked out really nice and for the silver on the silver screws on there i just actually painted with uh the testor's uh silver that i have now what a uh, few things that i did was is i did reinstall all the electronics like originally planned what I also did was, is I took some of the alcohol dye that we used when me and Arlene made the visor for my helmet, which I'm pointing to like you can actually see it, but it's hanging over there. Uh, the dye set we got came with three colors. The purple we used, a yellow, and a blue, and I decided for a little pop of color, why not use the blue on the transparent piece that goes there with the lights. Now. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but this part is actually blued and it does add like a nice little pop of color. Like just when the light hits it, it's like, ah, oh, okay. So it almost looks kind of like, I guess you can say an energy cell, but you know, the downside though is it didn't work how I was hoping. Well, it looks cool and all that stuff when you pull the trigger to for the firing. You see a little bit of the LED coming through the plastic, so it actually has a little bit of a red effect underneath it, and it doesn't light up that as much as I was hoping it would with the blue. Um, the other nice little thing is right under here, under these vents, you can actually see the silver, uh, the silver that I painted the plunger tube underneath it, so it makes a nice little contrast to it. So. This was actually a really fun build. Um, it was also a very simple build. A uh, little bit of small modifications like back here and on the, and taking out that uh, iron side up there. It changed the profile a little bit and it just makes it very nice and very clean. And yes, it still does work. Like I said, you just pull that back and it works. So, I'm sorry, I am extremely cold right now. It's winter, my shop does not have heat. I have a heater right there if you're wondering what the hell that thing is. And it goes to about here. <laughs> so that's it for this video. And as always, if you enjoyed the content we put here on the channel, throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this and how you think it came out. Um, also, if you have seen it, uh, let me know what you think of the new Star Wars movie, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I am planning on seeing it uh, pretty soon myself. And also, what have you thought of The Mandalorian? I personally think it's been a very good show. Um, but again, that's it for this video. I am freezing. I'm going back inside. I will see you guys later. Later.